Crystal Morris. She's with the East Texas Council on Drug and Alcohol Abuse, Alcohol and Drug Abuse, and uh, she's with the Prevention Resource Center. And I'll ask her to come up here and uh, speak to y'all.
tobacco compliance checks. So we will go to different retails, retailers that sell tobacco and make sure that they don't have public access to their products, that they uh, are keeping up with the state as far as uh, being certified for it. We do conduct public education, such as what I'm doing right now. And then we do have a website that can be accessed um, if you wanted to look at all the data that we've come up with um, for this uh, region. We do have community coalitions, so um, groups that come together from different, uh, different, I can't think of anything, different groups. Um, so churches, uh, law enforcement, uh, anything that you can basically see in the community come together to work and try to solve the problem of substance abuse. The ones that we have are in the counties of Harrison, Henderson, and Panola counties. Um, there's several in Gregg County um, and other areas. Pretty much every county has one. I was looking to see if Upshur County had one, but I'm not. I didn't see anything. So there's always the potential. Um, we offer outreach, screening, assessment, and referral. And so this program is kind of the one-on-one -on -one attention to um, people that come in with a substance abuse issue. Um, we offer the screening and assessment so they come in, we say, you know, assess the situation they're in, how can we help them, um, what we need to do to, to help them succeed. And we have physical locations in Longview, Tyler, and Pittsburgh. And for those that are not near that area, we provide um, a phone service so they can call in and we can still do the screening and assessment through that. Um, and then we refer them out to services. So that could be inpatient treatment, outpatient, um, things like that. And then we do the recovery support services. So again, that one-on-one -on -one connection. Um, personalized assistance to individuals and their families. Um, this is so they can have long-term recovery. Um, all of our peer recovery coaches are, are trained. Um, a lot of them are previous substance abuse users, so they can really, you know, get on that one-on-one -on -one level and and relate the most to um, somebody that's already that's already using. Um, we have men and women's groups. We have what's called a winter circle group, and this is for recently released. Um, crim well, I don't want to say criminals, but that were just came out of jail and are needing that extra uh, support to get back on the right track. We have a group for uh, female veterans, and we're also working on a prescription drug abuse group. Uh, it's still in the works, but that's kind of the leading epidemic right now is people abusing uh, their prescription drugs. And then finally, we have uh, court-mandated courses that do, cost, do have a cost to complete. Um, this is choices and consequences, so it's for both adults and adolescents. Um, it's just another basic information. Maybe they hadn't had it, had it when they grew up, and so they needed something, some, some other resources to help them. Um, we have a DWI intervention, and this is for uh, people that have had multiple DWI um, convictions. And then we have a minors in possession group. Um, basically, again, pr providing that basic information and resources, how, how they can get out of it so that it's not a problem later in adulthood. Uh, every year we put out what's called a regional needs assessment. You can see that, <clears throat> that we have our region four with the rest of the state. Um, in this, we provide uh, information where we get gather data from around the state as well as from all the county counties in our area, and um, try to make sure that uh, we know where our region is compared to the rest of the state. 
So many of the sources we get our data from um, include the U.S. Census Bureau, Texas State Data Center, Health and Human Resource Center, and National Center for Education Statistics. So now I'm going to go into the Upshur County overview. I have sheets here that have all of them on there. I'm just going to touch on a couple of them that at least you'll get to see. Now, compared to the other counties, um, Upshur County does fairly well. Um, I was looking for it. first before I say anything. Um, this is not meant to bring yourselves down about how your how your county is doing, um, but most of the ones that I was looking at actually have a pretty good, a pretty good uh, outlook here. So as far as demographics, um, there is a lower rate of population growth in this region. So uh, we have 1.7% versus 3.7%. And socioeconomics has one of the lowest percentages of single parent households compared to the region. So here it's 23% versus the region at 34%. For education, has one of the lowest dropout rates in the region at 2.1 compared to 3.6. So very good on education. As far as crime and family violence, um, the auto theft rate is one of the very lowest in the region at 881.1 compared to the region at 244.2. Uh, the family violence rates per 1,000 population is lower than that of the region. So 3.4 here versus 6.6 .6 in the region. The coming to alcohol and drugs does have the highest drug seizure rate in the region for methamphetamine doses at 2.3 per 1,000 versus 0.3. Also has significantly higher arrest rates per 100,000 population for alcohol and drug offenses, which also can, includes possession and sale and manufacture. Um, here it says uh, for Upshur County, 976.3 versus the region, 529.2 for drugs. And for alcohol, 722.5 versus 412 for the region. And then something that we look at a lot is uh, data for school districts, for students. It's called Monitoring the Future Survey, in which they ask them about uh, different uh, things related to how available is alcohol in your house, how available are drugs, how um, many of your friends use things like that. And so um, our region um, doesn't have enough uh, schools that participated, so we had to combine our data with uh, Region 5, which was below us. But uh, these are some things that we found kind of significant between um, in our schools. So as far as marijuana, students have higher rates in the state of current school year use and lifetime use. Lifetime use is just using it one time. It's considered a lifetime. And then prescription drugs, which again is becoming more and more of an ep epidemic. Um, our students have the highest reported rate in the state of use of the two opioid categories. So that's considered codeine, cough syrup, as well as the different prescription drugs, um, oxycotton, hydrocodone, Percocet, Vicodin, etc. So those are kind of the dire needs that we have right now are addressing the opioid prescription drug use of our, of our students and our kids. Um, this is what I have for you. So is there any questions that you might have? Yes, sir.
Yes, DW okay. guidance. It's for uh, more than one effect. More than one? Yes. All right, that's good because right now I can't go on and breathe with a tail. All right, thank you. You're welcome. How, how are you funded? We are funded through the state. Um, we do a lot of, apply for a lot of grants. So um, the Texas Health and Human Services Commission um, provides a lot of our, our funding. The, the drug and alcohol use among, uh, say, the teenagers, young, mm -hmm. young, what would be young people to me, is it is there a higher percentage rate among single uh, parent households or, or two or two parent households? Yes, there is, because it's considered one of those risk factors that um, you know. There's, I guess. Instead of having two eyes, you've got one pair of eyes. So does that does that go on to say their their twenties and their thirties? Does that statistic follow that as they grow mm -hmm. up? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Most of us know that methamphetamine use around here is, is high. Is it is it increasing, decreasing, or holding about the same? It's bad. Yeah, I'm not sure on that, but I can definitely find out for you. I'm sorry. What's the age group that you find the substance abuse seems to begin at, or what's the range of? Uh, it's it's 12 to 17. They've seen um, a lot of students beginning at 12 to really um, start exploring their parents' happens really, um, which scares me because my daughter turns 11 this year and I just can't even imagine that. Um, but a lot of it is the prescription drugs. You know, they're, they're finding that they're easy access to them and they're experimenting. They're throwing them uh, in a bowl and taking, you know, what they thought would. Um, and so that's really, that's kind of the big issue that everybody's looking at right now. Okay, well, thank you again for having me. I hope I've provided some good information for you. Thank you, Ms. Morris. We appreciate it very much.